2020 is a year I will never forget and has changed my life forever. My year started out unexpectedly in the Philippines. I spent a week in Manila exploring the local neighborhood that I was staying in, my hotel, and then made my way over to the famous mall of Asia. It was just as big, beautiful, and fun as I imagined it to be, and I met some wonderful people throughout the mall, and it was a great first impression of my first week here in the Philippines. I then hopped on a plane and flew to the beautiful island of Coron. This island amazed me with its beautiful hills and little town, and the water blew me away. I had so much fun during my time in Coron. I met some wonderful people, people that I continue to see throughout my journey here in the Philippines, and just really was a nice, fresh, breath of air. I then made my way to the beautiful island of Palawan. I arrived in El Nido and was blown away by the beauty there. I ran into some previous friends from Coron and made some new friends while in El Nido. I went snorkeling, I did my first diving expedition in the Philippines here, made a new local Filipino friend and headed to the northern part of El Nido where we discovered hidden beaches with nobody and no one. I couldn't have been more happy here. My next destination was by far my favorite, Malapascua Island, where I spent five days getting my advanced open water diving certificate, diving with the thresher sharks there, and just taking in the Philippines with the gorgeous beaches there. I then made my way over to the other side of Cebu to Mual Bual to dive with the sardines and just explore their diving there. By far my favorite area to dive was Mual Bual. I loved the atmosphere there, so relaxing, so calm, and I just was in heaven. Then the unthinkable happened. The world was shutting down. In the midst of preparing for a trip to the island of Bohol, I found myself stranded in Cebu City. I was told by my hotel that I would need to leave within 24 hours. Panicking, I went from hotel to hotel to hotel. One by one refused me as a foreigner, and I feared that I would end up on the street. I had never experienced such fear and anxiety during my years of travel and had no idea what was going to happen to me. After hours of searching for a hotel that would take me in, one of the gentlemen at the front desk of the hotel that I was staying at found a hotel that was accepting foreigners in Cebu City. For the next few months, I spent my time locked down in this hotel with limited access to go outside. I made some friends and tried to make the best of my time by working as much as I could, teaching as many students as I could, and just really taking in the time that I was able to go outside to the grocery stores and walking down the streets as the pandemic continued to rage outside in Cebu City and around the world. Two months into the enhanced community quarantine in Cebu City, as I remained locked down and limited to the access of the outside, I received a call from the same gentleman that found me the hotel two months ago. He notified me that the hotel was now going to pay me back the money that they did not refund me when I was asked to leave before. I was shocked and surprised and so grateful for his gesture to reach out to me. I met him in person, I gave him a huge hug even though we were in the middle of a pandemic, and I gave him half of what I was owed and it just felt so good to give back and to have someone there that didn't forget about me and helped me too. Three months into the lockdown in Cebu City, I decided that it was time to make my way to Manila. It was quite difficult to get on the plane to get to Manila, but I did it. I packed up my bags, made my way to the airport, and said farewell to Cebu City and the friends that I had made there. I took the well-known and notorious PCR test up the nose and shortly after I boarded the plane and was on my way to Manila. It was such a sigh of relief for me to arrive in Manila that was currently under a less strict quarantine. 
I was able to move around a lot more and just had a lot more freedom. Shortly after arriving, I found a wonderful Airbnb and an excellent host that took me in and in a way saved me. I couldn't have asked for anything more. It had a kitchen, beautiful view, a pool, great working Wi-Fi, an incredibly comfortable bed, and just overall the perfect situation I could ask for. For the next few months, I took the time to adjust to this new situation in Manila. As the lockdowns went up and down, I explored and ventured into new areas of Manila that I did not get to explore previously when I first arrived earlier in the year. I took the time to meet some new people and just really tried to focus on myself and figure out what my next move would be. While doing this, I was forced to confront a painful past involving a family member and the country of the Philippines. I decided to sit down and share my story publicly. In the midst of doing so, I had a bit of a breakdown. A breakdown that I had no idea how much I needed. This moment transformed me as a person. I grew and was able to heal from this painful past. If it wasn't for this pandemic and being stranded in the Philippines, this would have never happened. I was overwhelmed by love and support by my Philippine audience, friends, family, and everyone around me. This truly changed my life this year. As if on cue after making this personal breakthrough, I discovered Van Gogh is Bipolar, the most weird, eccentric, and fun cafe I have ever experienced. This cafe is not your ordinary cafe, it is an experience. I met Carla and Jetro, the owner there, who were life servers, explained the uniqueness, the dark side of the cafe, and the light side. It was a continuation of my healing and for me to be my weird and eccentric self. If you want an experience and possibly a healing and fun and eccentric experience, I highly suggest checking out Van Gogh is Bipolar. This was by far one of my favorite places in Manila and my favorite video I made all year. 2020 was one hell of a year for me and for so many others around the world. I learned to love myself, accept myself, let loose, and allow myself to heal more than ever. If there's one thing I took away from this year that I hope that all of you can take away as well, that is to be persistent and to never give up. No matter how dark and negative times get, they will always get better. Nothing lasts forever. I know this sounds very corny, but I do believe in it. After a hurricane, there's a rainbow. And there's a rainbow coming for all of us. Remember to live every moment to the max and never give up.